Have you ever wanted to go to orbit in Kerbal Space Program like me when I was young? And you just didn't know how? Well, you come to the right place. Three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hello everyone, I'm Andrew the Astronaut, and as you saw in that intro, today we're going to be teaching you how to get into orbit in Kerbal Space Program. Now, I know I've done massive missions before, like sending space stations up into orbit, and sending a rocket to the moon, however, not able to return, still waiting on Matt Lowne's reply. Uh, we, I think we could all use a little recap on how to go into orbit. So now you can see me constructing the rocket here. It's very easy, those FL, the smallest fuel tanks, with a Terrier engine, that's very efficient. We're gonna add the Reliant, but that thing cannot gimbal, so we're gonna have to add some fins and maybe some boosters of a few swivel engines, because those can gimbal. This is like your first orbit in Kerbal Space Program, so I don't really recommend you send something massive, like, I don't know, a space station and have wibbly wobbly rockets. I suggest just doing one mission to get yourself eased into getting or getting into orbit. Now, I would add some science experiments if I was in science mode, but those generally add more weight and I don't need that. But I do recommend that if you're in science mode. Now you can see we have launched off the pad and you want to start turning the moment you lift off and reach around 900 meters per second or around th the speed of sound which is 300 meters per second you can choose. But, yeah, this was pretty unstable. Uh, I will put the craft file on Kerbal X, and that'll be linked in the description. And now we can just start tilting, which allows us to go up and sideways. Now, we can just go up super fast, and then when we're at our Apple Apps, go to the side. But that's, that's like going around a house between up and sideways. But we can cut some time by going diagonally instead, by going sideways while we're going up. And now I will, st you still will need to warp to Apple and then point sideways to get into your orbit, but that's just in Kerbal Space Program. In real life, it'd be much more efficient to do it in one burn. So now we have our first stage, it's almost empty out of fuel, and we're gonna point basically 90 degrees and start burning, because that'll increase the size of our orbit, and then once we get that per periaps indicator above 70, thousand meters then we're in a successful orbit now i'm just tr making a maneuver node make sure that i'm on the right course i don't usually use these so you don't have to you could just burn sideways and if you're low on the tech tree in career mode and you can't make maneuver nodes or you're bringing a kerbal that can't make a maneuver node like bob for example which would be perfect for science mode then i suggest you don't need to use a maneuver node to get into orbit so now you're just going to burn sideways and warp till your apoapsis so that you can burn sideways to save a bit more fuel and to make your orbit a little bit less uh, janky. And wow, you can just admire those amazing visual mods there. I will add those in the description as well. And Matt Lyon has a great video on that, which I will also link in the description. And now we're in a perfect orbit. So now we can get our Kerbal out on EVA. And... You might notice that this is Valentina, not Jebediah. Well, because Jeb, Bill, and Bob are currently stranded on the mud. So, yeah, I had to use Val. I don't know if Val likes being in a super tiny rocket in orbit while Jeb, Bill, and Bob are on the mud, albeit stuck. But we're just gonna take a nice thumbnail image for the video, and you can get some cool stuff with that EVA jetpack. You could move around, rotate and stuff, and we're just going to head back to our capsule. We can press B to board after pressing F to grab, and we could just burn retrograde. Now, we have a ton of Delta V left. That Terrier engine is incredibly efficient, and we're just going to burn until our periapsis disappears. I'm just using a bunch of the fuel just to make it a less of a waste, and we're going to decouple the capsule. And we're going to warp till re-entry. Now, you don't have to worry about warping after re-entry because like that, if when you're about to enter, the time warp will automatically stop. And then you could just keep warping at times four in order to make the re-entry process faster. Now, I've removed most of the ablator from the heat shield because that's just extra dead weight and you, we don't need that. So now we're going to start burning into the atmosphere. If, you're, if you have science experiments on the capsule, I recommend you take them before 
because then those capsules might burn and explode and lo and you lose all the science from it. And we're just going to deploy our parachutes and we can just pristinely splash down into the ocean. Now, even the tiny bit of ablator that I had was still, still more than enough to re-enter through four times time or re-entry. So now we just have to coast down to the bottom. And if you're enjoying and if you enjoyed the video, I please consider liking and subscribing and commenting down below what you want to see next. Uh, I have a bunch of, I'm kind of running out of dry on ideas right now, and I would appreciate some community feedback. Anyways, I've been Andrew the Astronaut, and I'm signing off.